Hello everyone and welcome to Bridge is for Everyone. My name is Jad. This is episode 6 of the Learn to Play series. In this episode, you'll learn how to respond when partner opens one of a minor suit. Whenever partner bids, you need to understand what that bid is telling you. Let's recap the rules your partner will have used. The first requirement for a normal opening bid of one of any suit or any no trump opening is that partner have 13 or more points. If partner has 13 or more points, then partner must bid. Next, partner checks to see if a no trump opening is appropriate. A balanced hand with specific high card points is required for a no trump opening. If partner does not open no trump, it tells you that partner's hand is not one of these. It may not be balanced or it may not meet the strict point requirements or both. In episode 2, you saw that the point range for an opening bid of one of a suit is 13 to 21 points. If you are fortunate enough to have more than 21 points, this is the rule. Apart from the opening bid of three no trump, all other hands with 22 or more points are opened with a bid of two clubs. So if partner opens one of a suit, as you have seen before, it shows 13 to 21 points. If partner has any long suits, then partner will open a longest suit. Specifically, this can be summed up into a single rule. If you have any long suits, open your longest suit. With two equal length long suits, open the higher ranking suit. With no long suits, partner is required to open one club or one diamond. If partner opens one of these minor suits, what hand could partner have? Let's look at some examples of opening hands, all of which have 13 to 21 points. You saw this hand in episode two. It has one long suit, hearts. So you bid one heart to open the bidding with this hand. You also saw this hand in episode two. It has two long suits, each of five cards. You open the higher ranking of those suits, hearts, with a bid of one heart. This is another hand from episode two. It has two long suits, a five card heart suit, and a six card club suit. You opened with a bit of one club, the longest suit. Here is another hand from episode two. It has no long suits, so you look at the minor suits. It has four diamonds. You bid one diamond. This hand, also from episode two, also has no long suits but it does not have four diamonds. You bid one club with this hand. Here are the two hands you opened one club. They are very different hands, but they are opened with the same bid. Opening bids in a minor suit do not convey as much information as opening bids in a major suit. Remember what you learned about bridge contracts in episode 5. Whenever possible, you want to play in a major suit contract. Even when partner opens in a minor suit, you will be looking for a major suit contract or, failing that, a no trump contract. Now let's look at a new deal. This is deal number 301. Partner deals and here is your hand. As always, you value the hand. You have seven high card points and no long points, 
for a total of seven points. Your hand is flat and therefore balanced. Your seven points is not enough to open the bidding, but it is not your turn to bid. Partner dealt and will bid first. Partner opens the bidding with a bid of one club. East passes and it is your turn to bid. Is your hand strong enough to bid? Here is the rule. When partner opens one of a suit and your right hand opponent passes, you should bid with six or more points. But what should you bid? When the suit partner opened was a minor suit, you should bid a higher ranking suit if you can. The process used to determine which of these suits to bid is something you will use in many different bidding situations. To make it easy to refer to this process, I call it the J process. Let's follow the J process using this hand as an example. Partner opened one club, so you will bid a higher ranking suit if possible. The J process looks at the length of these suits. First, eliminate any suit with less than four cards. In this example, only the heart suit remains, so this is the suit you should bid. You bid one heart. By bidding one heart, you are telling partner that you have six or more points and at least four hearts. If partner has four or more hearts, your partnership will have a fit in hearts and will play in a heart contract. Let's look at a different hand to see how the J process works. This is deal number 302. Here is your hand. As always, value your hand. You have eight high card points and zero long points for a total of eight points. You have only one short suit, a doubleton in clubs, so your hand is balanced. Partner dealt and will bid first. Partner bids one diamond. East passes. It is your turn to bid. Partner opened a minor suit, so you must use the same rules as the previous hand. Because you have six or more points, and East passed, you will bid. Following the rules for responding to a minor suit opening, you identify the higher ranking suits and apply the J process. Step one of the J process is to eliminate any suit with less than four cards. Once again, you are left with only hearts. You bid one heart. Look closely at this response. It is quite different from responding to a major suit opening. Partner opened diamonds, and you have four diamonds, a clear fit. But you did not use that fit to make your bid. You did not revalue your hand because you did not bid the same suit as partner. If partner has four hearts, then the partnership will play in a heart contract. There is a very important question to ask here. What will happen if partner does not have four hearts, especially if partner now passes? Here is the rule. When you have not yet passed, if partner opens one of a suit and your right hand opponent makes any call, then if you as responder bid a different suit from partners and the next opponent passes, then partner is not allowed to pass. Responder's bid of a new suit is called a forcing bid because it forces the opener to bid. Forcing partner to bid ensures that you will get another bid. This can be extremely useful, especially with strong hands. Remember, 
your response of one in a suit shows six or more points. There is no upper limit to your bid. You may know that the partnership has enough points for a very high contract, but partner does not know that. So by forcing partner to bid, you can insist on a high contract. You'll learn about other forcing bids in future episodes. Now let's deal another hand. This is deal 308. Here is your hand. You value the hand. You have seven high card points and zero long points for a total of seven points. Your hand is balanced. Partner dealt and opens the bidding with one club. East passes. It is your turn to bid. After a minor suit opening, you apply the rules. You consider all the higher ranking suits and eliminate those with less than four cards. This time, you have two suits remaining. The next step in the J process is to find the longest of the remaining suits and eliminate any that are shorter. With this hand, you have two four-card suits and cannot eliminate either of them. This brings us to the final step in the J process. If the remaining suits are long suits, meaning five or more cards, bid the highest ranking suit. If they are not long suits, as is the case here, bid the suit with the cheapest bid. You bid one heart. Even with an opening bid of one club, Partner may have four hearts or four spades, so there is still the possibility of a fit in either hearts or spades. Your bid is forcing because you have not previously passed and it is a bid in a new suit. This episode has covered more of the basics of bridge and focused on how to bid your hand when responding to an opening bid of one of a minor suit by your partner. In doing this, you learned how to use the J process to find which suit to bid. In future episodes, I will cover everything else you will need to be a confident and successful bridge player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, this is Jad reminding you that bridge is for everyone.